Okay, in this video I want to show you uh, the different types of finishes that we can achieve in our workshop. Um, this is uh, really showing you the entire range of sort of French polishing, what French polishing is about. So this is a piano lid that we've pulled out of our store. As you can clearly see, this piano lid has seen much better days. It is severely sun bleached um, and the finish is deteriorated to nothing. You can't even see the wood underneath. We think, I think this is rosewood under here. If I lift up this fall off this piano, you can see the underside of it here it's still got the original finish which has deteriorated. It's a Broadwood and Sons piano of London. We've polished many of these and I'm sure many of our viewers have got one of these. But you can see that has seen better days. So what we're going to do is going to show you um, how we would French polish this rosewood, how we would wax finish it and we'll leave part of it original so you can always see. So first of all I'm going to mask off the sections Right, so this area here, I'm going to strip this finish off it, this sun bleach finish, to reveal hopefully the rosewood underneath. Normally, we would take the hinge off and separate this piano uh, fall, but for the purposes of the video, I'm going to leave it on there. So I'm applying. That's going to be a paint stripper, in effect, but it is a, a special one we have for furniture. It's not quite as aggressive. In this circumstance, I think it will work very, very quickly because the finish is so bad. You can see how it immediately is working. I also, can you see how I'm not brushing it? I'm not slapping it around. Um, you have to be careful of your eyes and your hands because this stripper, paint stripper, furniture stripper will burn, burn your skin. So just be careful. I'm laying the stripper on. I'm allowing it to bite into that worn finish and hopefully lift it away from the surface. This is coarse wire wool, which we use to remove all the excess polish now. The old polish has just been dissolved by the stripper. I'm using gloves because the stripper will burn the skin if I get it on me. Um, it's like a burning sensation. It doesn't actually burn it, but it's a burning sensation. And also this coarse wire wool, it's like cheese wire. It's really coarse. so with bare hands, if you were to tear it with bare skin, the chances are it might cut through into your skin. So be careful if you're doing this at home. Right, let's, let's see what we have underneath here. A 
and as we thought there is rosewood it looks quite dark but that is rosewood under there and the reason it's so dark still is because because the piano when it was French polished it had a scumble glaze over the top of it it had color added to it and that's protected the wood from bleaching and stop the color from bleaching out so it's still got its original darkness to the to the rosewood it's almost like ebony so it's part of the ebony family Right, okay, so we've stripped this tired sun bleached finish, which had a scumble glaze over it, um, which is colouring to add to that rosewood effect. We've stripped off, and there you are, the original rosewood. It's still quite dark. Uh, you can see the white in the grain, which is the grain filler, but it's nice and smooth, and the original lovely rosewood is there. So I'm going to now, all the stripper has been cleaned back. You saw me wire welling it back nice and dry. Like I said before, we normally take the piano, separate these off, and the hinge will be separate, but for the purposes of the video, we're keeping it. Now I'm going to neutralize it. So, here we go. This is just methylated spirits. This is to neutralize the stripper, because we used a spirit-based stripper. I think you can only get water-based strippers now, but if you can use methylated spirits or water, this counters the strong alkali of our stripper that we used. That's the reason for doing this. So with the finish we put on, I want a neutral pH surface. I don't want it to retard any of the, the finish that we're putting on there, but you can see this is pretty much, look at that. Look at that color of that rosewood, that beautiful rosewood. It's only taken a few minutes to do this. We'll just let that evaporate. Okay, so we've neutralized the surface of this rosewood. You see it's all nice and clean and uh, ready to have some finish put on there. Uh, we're going to French polish this and I'm going to French polish it as it is. I don't want to start sanding. There's no reason for me to sand this whatsoever. If there are marks and scratches in the surface, on the surface, I want to keep them there. It's part of its history, it's part of its, its provenance, it's, it's, it's what happened to this piano all over these years. If I was to uh, put sandpaper near this, what will happen to the rosewood? It will go dark, it will go black and go revert back to its original colour, which means I'd have to paper the whole surface evenly. Uh, if to have it all back to the original colour. I don't want to do that. We never really do that on rosewood. It's, it, it doesn't happen. 
if we had to put sandpaper near it, if we had to do that, if we, the one way to return it back to this sort of colour, or you can try and gauge it, is by using nitric acid. I'm not going to show you doing that, but it's something that we would use here uh, with applying a nitric acid treatment to bleach the rosewood and bring it back to this sort of faded colour which it has here, this lovely colour. Okay, so the next process I'm going to show you here is we're going to start French polishing this, this piece of wood. Okay, so we've had a little discussion in here and we've decided that we were going to show you now not only this side, which will be traditionally French polished, but this part of the piano floor, which we've also stripped, we're going to give you the natural wax finish. We're just going to apply some Gilboy's gold to this. We'll probably put some pure gold and maybe some rose gold. You can put antique gold, doesn't matter. Um, really, we're just going to put a wax finish to show you uh, what a basically a dry shine is really. Uh, just a pure wax finish on here, but this bit will French polish. So I'm going to put some masking tape down here, as is the tradition. Some pure gold. It's our clear, colourless wax. Look at that. Looks like looks like clotted cream. Look at that. I could eat that. Isn't that lovely? Right. I need a little bit of clean. Right. What I'm going to do? I'm going to apply it with a little bit of buffing cloth. In this circumstance. So, I'm just going to charge this cloth I'm just going in circles to make sure it gets into the grain there and on this part of the fall, I'm going to I'm going to apply some rose gold. Again, I'm just going to use uh, some uh, buffing cloth. You can use it to apply; it's not a problem. The rose gold's got a little bit of colour in it. see that just going into the, the rosewood beautiful look at that that lovely well, put them back on so while that's drying I'm going to French polish this part of the fall here so at the wax We'll wax polish that in a minute as well and we leave that as original but here we'll French polish this part of the fall. So we'll start off, there's no reason for me to grain fill, the grain fill is there and there's no reason for me to stain it. I don't need to stain, I want the natural colour of the rosewood to come through. We've already seen the natural colour of the rosewood coming through when we applied the meths. So that's the next process I'm going to do. You could apply some linseed oil, some boiled linseed oil, just one application over the surface, just to get rid of the whiteness of this grain filler that I can see in the rosewood. But again, I'm just going to show you how we would French polish. So this is very, it's well charged. So French polish, which is in here, this is the French polish, special pale polish shellac and methylated spirits this is a fad charged with it it's wet i'm just going to apply it in straight lines over the surface
There we go. I'm going to let that dry just for a couple of minutes and then I'm going to apply it again. Obviously we were doing the whole piano. I'll be working away around the whole piano. Time I would come back to this, it would be dry anyhow. But because we're doing such a small area, I'm just going to leave it alone for a few minutes. I don't want it to become all sort of jammy as we would call it. I don't want it layers and layers of polish there streaking and look varnishing, uh, varnish like. So let that soak in. I've added a little bit of methylated spirits to the polish as well because I don't want it to be too thick and also helps to um, allow it to penetrate into the timber and for it to dry as well because the methylated spirits evaporates away. Okay, so we've applied a few applications of uh, French polish, special pale polish to the surface here, uh, using a fad, which is basically our buffing cloth, formed into a pad, charged with French polish, special pale polish, and applied to the surface. There's three or four applications have gone on there. Now I'm just going to denib the surface with some fine sandpaper. This is 320 sandpaper. I'm just taking little nibs off the surface. I'm not cutting back hard, there's hardly any pressure. I'm just taking off the nibs in the direction of the grain. Again, as I said before, normally we'd have these two pieces of wood separate. They wouldn't have the piano hinge on there. But for the purposes of this video, we're leaving it on. This probably sounds worse on the mic that's right beside this than it actually is. It's only a light denib. So the process is of French polishing, well I'm just doing this. Once you're happy with the surface, the bare wood surface, the raw white wood as you call it, the substrate, it is stained, grain filled, fadded, which is where we're at now. We're cutting back that fad, those fads of polish, ready for colouring, would be the next stage. The next stage of polishing would be colouring where we would either apply colour with a colour fad, the same sort of fad that I had before with colour added to it over the surface, which happened here, or I'd use a pencil brush and touch in any areas that needed colour added to them. We're not going to do any of that because we want this perfectly natural finish. So that's fatted. I'm now going to start rubber, rubbering the surface and using a rubber to body the surface of this finish that we have here. And here is a rubber that we use in the workshop. Here's a small one, so sorry, a small area. Inside here is a bit of cotton wadding. I'm going to charge that cotton wadding with some special pale polish. Pure cotton cloth cut in a square, roughly nine inches. Wrapped around that bit of wadding. And I know I'm just going to press the face of it to make a nice, fl a smooth, flat face. And now I'm just going to see the polish coming off there. I'm going to apply the polish to the surface. A lot less polish will come out when I'm rubbering here and you can see how I'm being a bit more liberal with the rubber. I'm going to use a little bit of white oil. This is white mineral oil. 
super fine oil. This allows the rubber to glide across the surface and not stick. It's something to be taken out later on. You see the streaks it leaves behind, but that oil will come out over time. Bit awkward with the hinge there, normally you wouldn't have that there. See, I'm just doing figure of eight movements across the surface. I'm not stopping at any point. Not stopping on the surface because it will burn into the polish. Fast movements, a little pressure, and increasing the pressure as I go along. I can squeeze the body of the rubber here, which will in turn squeeze out a little bit more polish and apply that to the surface. It's very hard to describe. The only way to do it is to practice. But you can already see how the French polish finish is starting to build. got my hand behind my back. The reason for doing that is so your hand doesn't go anywhere else and go onto the surface of the wood. If you're doing a larger piece, your hand might go putting down. But if you put it behind your back, you get a much better balance when you're French polishing. Okay, so we've done a little bit of bodying there. Didn't take very long, it's a small area. We've applied quite a lot of polish to this rosewood here. You can see the depth of polish. This will probably sink overnight. I could carry on bodying and bodying and forcing the polish into the grain, building up, building up to that piano finish. But what I'm gonna show you now is the spiriting side of things. Now, other French polishers, and we do as well, sometimes we'll have a spirit rubber, which is purely for this purpose of removing the oil which you saw me apply and it's mainly made up of methylated spirits with a little bit of french polish and you can apply a little bit more meths and build up the meths in the rubber to take out all of the oil as this is such a small area and we've got a small little rubber i'm just going to apply a little bit of meths i charge it into this rubber because it was quite a messy rubber anyhow. I'm still going to keep the same face to the rubber as well. We could change that to get rid of the oil that was remaining on it. But that's, I can, it's quite messy. So that's what I want. And the idea is that meths penetrate into the surface of the polish 
and removes the oil. The oil will stop it from drying, so we need to take that oil out. So this is a very, very quick process. I don't want to be on the surface very long at all because the Metz is the solvent of French polish and it will dissolve and stick. I just want to take out the oil. And the way that we test to see if the oil was taken out is by breathing onto the surface. So if I I mean, watch to see how quickly my breath area, that moisture evaporates, and you see if there's a rainbow ridge around it. And depending on how quickly that evaporates will tell me how much oil is left in there. I can see a little rainbow edge to it, so there's oil left in it, and it's not evaporating as quick as I would like, so we still need to spirit it off. This process also helps get that really deep and lustrous shine to a finish because it just dissolves that layer on top of the French polish and really flattens it out. It's a really skillful part of French polishing and you'll see a lot I've seen a lot on YouTube of all sorts of different ways of doing it, but this is the right way to do it. Using a proper spirit rubber, not using cloths and wiping it over the surface or anything like that. You need to use a rubber. And in the same way as you will be bodying the surface we previously done, we, we do the same process for the spiriting. You see the face of the rubber is also quite white here. And it's got a lot of meths in it. <sighs> See, that's moving much quicker. Look at that. There's a slight rainbow tint to it, but the actual area shrunk down much quicker. Right. Notice how fast I'm moving over the surface. You can't dawdle or stop, or you'll burn into the polish and then we'll have to start again. Not a problem. Now you can see the grain in that finish. If it was a full piano finish, you would have filled that grain. Like I said, we could have cheated a little bit and done the grain filling which sort of stops the whole process, but the idea would be in French polishing, you fill the grain with French polish using a rubber. Right, so we've French polished this area here. You watched me doing that with one very light cut back with the 320. We bodied it, we spirited it. Earlier on, we put some Gilboy's gold on here. We had some pure gold and rose gold. We're now going to buff it off. So this is direct to the stripped rosewood with nothing else just got the wax on it that's all it is so it's a natural finish here completely bare wood with just wax polish on it pure gold rose gold the rose gold's got a slight mahogany color rosewoody color a warmth to it which you can actually see maybe it might be the angle just put a little bit of warmth into the wood there we go, look at that, it's got a lovely satin sheen. 
that easy to buff look at that so this is a finish in its own right it's almost called a dry shine what we would do now traditionally is wax the French polished finish and the idea of the wax then protects the French polished finish that's the idea of the wax polish or you can use it like this the other thing if you don't want to strip so this is our original finish to this rosewood fall off this piano we've done nothing to it pulled out of our store I'm going to apply some rose gold and some antique gold to this surface and see what happens it's a very dry finish you can hear it I mean the finish is completely broken down but the rose gold will nourish into that dry finish and put a little colour into where it was all that sort of yellow nicotine colour, that horrible sort of nicotine colour that's got here. Right, so I'll we'll put some antique gold onto this part of the fall. There we go, look at that. You can see the colour gone straight into it. So if you didn't want to go down to the process of stripping or repolishing, you're doing this at home, and if you've got a piano or a finish, it doesn't have to be a piano, a finish that looks like this. Look what our polish will do. The colour has gone straight into that finish has absorbed straight into it and all those lovely carnauba wax or that lovely beeswax from Buckfast Abbey the Miracle wax it's all going to work its magic there there you are, I'm just going to take the excess off and we'll come back to that a bit later and see what that looks like. We left it for 20 minutes. Rose gold, antique gold. Let's buff. And a sheen coming up to that, I can see that. I think a, a couple more applications that'd be perfect, but it's never going to beat removing that finish and getting this, which is just rose gold straight onto the bare wood or French polish. But you can see what you can achieve just using a really good wax polish, which is made by us. And there's the original finishes. So we've got the original finish, rose gold, antique gold, straight on top, strip finish, pure rose, and then French polished. And what we will do, maybe in the next couple of days, we'll let this go hard and we'll wax finish this. Uh, as, so it's a completely finished article. Well, what I will do now, actually, while we're here, is I'll remove the masking tape so you've got an idea of what was there before. There you go, so there's the stripped rosewood, pure wax, rose gold, pure gold. It's just amazing. And here, See a lot of the, this is the finish coming off with the masking tape. That's how bad and how deteriorated the finish had got. So we've got the rose gold, antique gold on here. Let's see if I can get underneath it. Yeah, now you can see the difference clearly. What that's done. See, it's toned it down, it's nourished it, there's a sheen to it. That's just by simply applying a really good wax polish, which is Gilboy's Gold.